Social movements are the only thing that have ever changed this country. Laws get changed, Supreme Court decisions get made because of social movements. Because social movements change consciousness. Consciousness changes history. History is made by people working together. You know, there's an old saying, history is made by those who show up. And that's a lot, I think, accurate, because it goes to the question of who gets out in the street, who signs petitions, who meets with their member of Congress, who struggles to figure out the law and, and bring the lawsuits. All of those things together are part of the social movements. The level of racism in this country, the discrimination against African Americans, that included lethal lethal attacks that included the slaughter of African Americans for no reason other than that they were African Americans. The slavery itself only ended, there, there only was a civil war because there had been a movement against slavery. Civil, the civil rights movement was the reason that there could ultimately be a voting rights act, a civil rights act. These were not acts that were just done somehow by people of goodwill who happened to be on the, on the Supreme Court. They were done because it became unacceptable socially in the world to discriminate legally. Israel is an outlier in that, in that way for having legalized discrimination today. Discrimination is practiced all over the world, but very few countries have a legal system that identifies it that way. So I think that social movements are the only thing that give me hope. It's the only thing that makes possible social change. They don't always work the way we want them to. In 2001 and 2002 and the beginning of 2003, there was a huge global movement to stop the looming war against Iraq, a war that was illegal, that was not supported by other countries, and we knew it was coming. And it was a massive movement. On February 15, 2003, the day the world said no to war. The Guinness Book of World Records said that more people than ever before in history, somewhere between 12 and 14 million people on one day, came out into the streets in their own capitals all around the world with one demand, the world says no to war. It was to stop the illegal war in Iraq. And in 665 cities all around the world, people said the same thing. That wasn't enough it turned out. The war went forward. But it made clear that the war was illegal. It made it harder to do it again. It made it harder, and it's making it harder now, to go to war against Iran. So even that failure to stop the war it was targeting directly was a success and remains a success in transforming the world in which policymakers even think to consider war. You know, it's a, it's a hard question to ask, I think, any individual, why do you do this? Um, for me, I grew up with a strong commitment to what was then my understanding of social responsibility. It was, as I understand it now, a very limited understanding. I grew up Jewish, very pro-Israeli. Uh, my understanding of opposing racism, for example, meant not discriminating against black people in the United States. It didn't extend to my uncritical support at the time when I was a kid and all through high school uh, for, for Israel. I thought Israel was this great place, sort of socialist. The kibbutz movement, you know, I never, I learned about the kibbutz as a socialist enclave. It never occurred to me to ask whose land was that kibbutz being built on? Who was there before? I didn't ask those questions till much later. I was inspired as a kid by the Civil Rights Movement. I didn't understand it very well, but I was inspired by it. And I was lucky enough to go off to college at the height of the anti-war movement around Vietnam, and lucky enough to be swept up into that motion that was going on all around the world to stop that war. And that became the centerpiece of, of what I did just because I was a product of, of that social movement. Social movements make people as well as people make movements. And I was made by that movement, and it never left me. I've been lucky enough to have jobs, to have work that makes my passion my work. And although you'll never get rich doing it, 
it's a huge privilege to do that kind of work. It's a huge privilege. I've gotten to travel the world and meet people involved in struggles for social justice all over the world. How many people get to do that? It's such a huge privilege. It probably won't happen in our lifetimes, but can you imagine us reaching a point to where this kind of work is no longer needed? Can, is, is that a plausible thing to look forward to? I don't think there will ever be a time when social movements are not needed to make the world a better place. What they're fighting for will be different. I mean, I can envision a world where racism really is outlawed and in a real sense doesn't exist anymore. I can imagine where discrimination against women, against gay people, against all the, uh, all the isms that exist would go away, but by then there will be new isms to challenge. I don't think we're ever going to lose the need for social movements.